Now let's take a look at loading data from an XML file. To do this, we're going to use the XML plugin, and specifically, we're going to use the XML reader function. Here, we can set the source. This can either be a file or a string. You can also set the XML file. Again, this can be dynamic or static, depending on your requirement. You could, for example, use something like the list files component to list all files in a directory, and then simply pull the file name from there. Next, you need to set up the schema. This can be done in multiple ways. You can either load the schema directly or build the schema from your existing XML. I'm going to choose to build it from my XML. You can also set up custom property mappings if you need to. If we run the application in debug mode, we'll be able to see what data is returned. Here we can see the structure of how the data is going to be returned. Because we're going to receive a list, we will have to loop through that list. To do this, I'm going to use a for each component. Now I'll simply set our product list as the list that we need to loop through, and then we're going to insert the data into a database. For this, I'm going to use the execute SQL component in the database plugin. You can interact with virtually any database using this plugin. Now we need to set our connection string. I'm going to use a setting that I've created for this. And now inside of our SQL dialog box, we can see the variables coming from the for each loop. These variables we can now use to insert into our database, update records, or whatever you need to do. You can also add additional logic, for example, an if else statement, if you need to skip certain records, or perhaps you need to apply specific data transformations on specific values. To learn more, go to links.software.